everyone, it's Billy Hale, and in the mail came my Tone Shaper. And I've got it all unpacked here in the work area. The uh, exciting part about this is this is the Tone Shaper for Les Paul. And if you're familiar with Tone Shaper, you know they make one for the Strat and the Tele, and they, they have a few different things that you can buy, but this is the first for the Les Paul. My Les Paul is currently my favorite guitar, and... Uh, I've done a lot to it, and I thought this would be pretty cool. I've done everything from the uh, Jimmy Page wiring to standard, vintage, and uh, the reason I went for this is I would be able to hear everything at one time, and we'll go over all the stuff that it does later. But first, I wanted to show you the parts that it came with. The main ingredient here is the uh, board that does everything that you need it to do. And the thing that you can't see in some of their shots on the website is that the board has a volume knob on the you know it's soldered on so you've got that and then here's some surprising things I did not expect to get a new jack plug but I got that so I pulled my old jack off and then it also comes with a three-way switch did not expect that and uh, here's all our wiring for that and I have a humbucker I have a uh, four wire humbucker on the LP and so I got a push pull. I'm not exactly sure what that I think what that's going to allow me to do is go from parallel to series and I think there's another option there. We'll go for that when we get to that part. And then I was running a four wire humbucker at the neck, but I did not like the way it sounded so I switched it out for a P90, which is not a humbucker, but I love it. It is fat and I just love it. And so I didn't get to do a push pull for that, but then we have our standard pots here when we get there. And then also they included a packet of nuts and bolts so we can get the uh, height of the knobs perfectly on top of the guitar, which I have purchased uh, tone knobs or tone pots before that didn't come with the extra nut that I needed to get it right. And then another thing I didn't expect was a screwdriver. And the reason that they give you this is because on the board here, Right there, hanging off. That's where your grounds go, and you have to take a screwdriver to tighten that down. And I think the theory here is this screwdriver is kind of small, and it doesn't allow you to get too torquey on that uh, screw there and rip it out of the board, which would be a big drag. This appears to be a pokey stick. I don't think that's a technical term, but um, getting your three-way switch back through your, your, your channel can be tricky. So there's this. We'll verify if that's what this is for later when we install. And then what else? There's a little tube here. I don't know what that does yet. And then we also have this black tube. I think what this is for is to go and a uh, channel that goes up to your three-way. And then you can get this all the way out the, the front of the guitar and then push your wires into this. And that helps you get everything through the body. So here we go. This is the whole thing. What I have to do now, evidently, is pull out my jack on my Les Paul, pull off my three-way, and then I've also already desoldered my old uh, pots and all the things that were in it. So now it's gutted, and I'll bring the guitar out and we'll get going on that part. And I, I pulled my three-way out of here. Um, all my pots are gone, and then as you can see in the back, it's all cleaned out down there. All we have are our loose wires, which we need to connect. So I will get going with putting a few things in here. So it turned out that a couple of my other holes, these two, are not big enough. So I'm going to ream those out and this thing happens to be the perfect size. Okay, they're all reamed out. Everything's cool. Everything will fit. Um, I know somebody out there saying, hey, I'm not reaming out the holes in my guitar. This is my beautiful guitar. Well, I mean, that's an option, not to remount your guitar, but it's a guitar. Somebody had to drill that hole in the first place. I would not be afraid of modifying your guitar. It makes the whole guitar experience. It broadens out what you can do, and then you really start to understand what's going on in here when you're the guy that's going in and making the changes. I never knew how to set up a Floyd Rose. I've never done any wiring before, you know, a few years ago, and now I'm totally at home with it. It's not scary. Sometimes it's a PIA, but that's why 
I wanted this thing because this will take all the guesswork out of did I put the right wire where because I don't have to worry about that anymore. Anyway, moving on. Well, for a second there, I thought this was not going to fit my cavity because it's Chinese and I thought, you know, this Les Paul might not be exactly the same, but good news. It totally fits in there. And here it is coming out the other end. So we're on to the next phase. Here's the next phase. We're going to take our pots, we're going to put them in, and we're going to adjust them so that our knob, our hats, will be at the right height on the guitar so that, you know, so you don't have a lot of thread hanging out, which prior to this I did have a lot of thread hanging out. And so that's what we're going to do next. And when I cut back, I should be done with that. Basically what you'll do is you'll take a pot and your little goodie bag. Take out one of these black uh, tooth washers and then another washer. We'll put that on first and then we'll drop it in, get the height right. And so this will be pre-adjusted before we get everything locked up. So I'll do that right now. All right, we're moving to the tone pots. Um, this is your volume neck. And so I have a four-way. And I looked it up on my instructions. It says the four-way is a tone. So that's going to be, since the bridge has um, is a four-wire, this is going to be the bridge, to, uh, bridge tone. Then this is the bridge volume neck volume, neck tone, and as you can see I put my washers on here and put it all on the guitar and check that out. A lot of black stuff in there. I guess that's paint. And uh, so now I'm gonna plug these guys in. If you look here, this is where these plugs are gonna go. And then here it shows you what goes where. So that seems pretty simple. I'm gonna do that. They say to be careful press uh, carefully so you don't bend any of these prongs. So I'm going to do that and I'm going to take all this stuff and mount it into the Les Paul. So I will be back after I do that. Alright, I got them all on. They're all nice and flush. Look in here. Everything fit. I thought I was having an issue with this thing but um, you know, it's it's not going to live right down on in the bottom of the cavity. It lives, you know, almost halfway up, which is great because you can get to your dip switches and all. So be sure to go straight in. Be sure that your holes are drilled big enough to accommodate these shafts. Drill them a little bigger than you need, because I have found on these pots right here um, the threads actually will. You can slide them in. But they, if it, the hole's too small, they will not come out because the, the threads are pointed down. So they kind of grab onto the wall of the hole. And that, my brother, is not fun. So make sure the holes in there are big enough. But look, it all fit. And this is Chinese, so that means it will definitely fit in the American version. Pots went in nicely. I think everything's hooked up correctly. And that moves us into our three-way switch and our jack. Oh... Nope, I was thinking I might have should have done that jack first. I'm following the instructions, going the way they're telling me to. So next is the three-way. All right, the black tubing that they gave me is right there. Goes up through here. Got a ground wire here, so that was tricky. I found out what my... Where did it go? I found out what my wooden dowel was for here. Because at this point... I manipulated it up through here, and then right about here in the guitar is where, well, not right about, somewhere in here anyway, uh, in this area, is where the screw comes in from your pickup, and it's right in the middle of my cavity. might not be the way that way on yours, but uh, I was able to get this in, and the trick in this tube and getting it in there is as you're going in, you know, the tube's going to want to turn whatever way it was rolled up in. You can turn it. So if it needs to go this way, you can turn that tube and get it rolling out that way and going up into the slot. I finally got it out of here. If I'm reading the instructions right, it says to put this bunch of wires into the tip and then slowly pull them through, which sounds great, but I don't know if I can do that. So I put a little tape on here, which probably will get hung up 
at some point in here and I might have to do it again. Another thing to point out is I had this installed but when I did I couldn't get into my outlet here so I just pulled it off. And so now I'm going to see if I can thread this thing back on here. Well my thread idea worked, or not my thread idea, my tape idea worked. It actually uh, slid through the channel a lot easier than it was to get the uh, plastic piece up through. Anyway, here's those connectors. Here's a three-way. And the thing to be sure of, and it actually, if you install it like this, I don't think you can get it wrong. Over here on the instructions it shows you the right way and the wrong way. Two bolts down with the V pointed out away from your guitar, and that's what I've got here, so we're all good. I'm going to mount that. I'm going to throw that jack in there, and then I think we're ready to hook it up. All right, I'm excited to proclaim this a success. This thing's good, so I'll button up the hole. We're rounded through here, so I'm done here. I'm going to button this up. I did a little zip tie action on some of my cables just to keep them out of my way for flipping the dip switches. And then, as you can see on the front, my switches are back on. You would never know that I had taken a drill to it. Not a drill, actually, but a reamer. And uh, so we're good. A couple of notes that I would say is double or triple check your wiring. I know it's simple enough. Red, green, blah, blah, blah. But uh, I did get a couple in the wrong place. Also, don't confuse GRN for ground when GRN actually represents green. These are all labeled right here. And that's also in the manual. So what you can't see here, you'd be able to see in the manual and online as well. Um, I have been playing with the dip switches, so that'll be the next video, just kind of letting the tone come through. And I'm running a P90 in my neck here because I was at a social distortion show and it sounded so good that I had to get a P90. Um, I had to rewire this because red does not represent red here and white does not represent white. Um, white is power and I believe I have that going to the green and then red is ground and I have that going to the black. When I did that my P90 worked great and then I ran the bare wire over to the little lug here where all the ground wires are going. Everything else is super simple. Um, your three-way switch is all right here and it's all labeled very simple. Your plug the first two here super simple and then you know my humbucker with four wires they all live in this area and that was simple so other than the P90 everything was as simple as it could be um, the wood stick that I showed earlier is used to push these tabs in and that was a little tricky some of the wires went in great some didn't want to go in at all and what I realized was just to shove them in you know I'd put a lead on it about that long and then I soldered it although I don't know that soldering is a good idea I might not recommend that I might recommend you just twist your wires and you gotta get that thing in there and then let go and then pull on it and make sure it's tight and I have been messing around with this thing open like this and everything's been very solid no hum even with the P90 which rocks and it all sounds great so this is the end of the install I'm gonna leave the back off and then I'll take this into my guitar room and play a little bit and so show some of the switching but uh, I'm a big fan <clears throat> of the whole process you know I've done a lot of different wiring setups on this guitar alone and if you get it wrong you never know what you got wrong is this wire wrong and then ultimately after a while I'll probably rewire the whole thing just to start from scratch which is a real PIA after a while so this takes all that out of it I mean it's all in you make sure your pots all fit then you drop in your wires, run through the cavity, bang, you're done. And then this will do everything that all my different wiring schematics would do, except I can pick it all myself. So, we're done with this part. I'm very excited. This concludes the uh, install of the Tone Shaper for the Les Paul. And the next video, which will be at my YouTube channel, will be the uh, listening to some tones that we can get out of this thing. I'm Billy Hale. This is the Tone Shaper for the Les Paul. Goodbye.